Welcome to episode 105 of the ABC GCI Coffee Break podcast. My name is Allison Jackson, joined this week by Mike Maloney and Kayla Rodriguez Santiago. This week, we have a new set of sponsors. Super exciting. So our presenting partner this month is the Haynes Group. We love everyone over at the Haynes Group. Um, And then our lightning round sponsor is New Horizon Finishes. So Mike, tell us a little bit about our new partners this month. We are beyond excited to have two new sponsors for the next couple of months here. We've got the Haynes Group as their presenting sponsor. They were founded in 2001 by the brothers Mike and Brian Haynes uh, with the idea of combining quality construction management expertise with a personalized service experience beyond anything available in the industry. Uh, Kate Kingman over there has been a fantastic connection over there. We love seeing her at all the events. And it's always uh, good to know that uh, someone I graduated high school with way back in the olden days Anthony Lodi is the CFO over there. So we are proud to have them on board. They'll be here for the next couple of months. And then our lightning round sponsor is the wonderful people over at New Horizon Finishes. Uh, they are a uh, they offer a full array of finishes and wall covering services to its customers. They pride themselves on providing their customers with the highest level of service, specializing in fast track commercial projects of all types. And, and this week's guest is Michael Sloan on the podcast. He is the vice president and field super over there. Uh, he's been in the business for over 20 years. Uh, it, I was excited to know that they've been ABC members for almost 16 years, which is fantastic news. He loves ABC Massachusetts, loves what we're all about. So we're happy to have them on. Uh, this week's kind of interesting topic because it's our first episode back in the new year, talking about resolutions. Pod Squad, what do you got for resolutions? Anything good? Kayla, go ahead. Um. Uh, well... <laughs> Kayla's got a book over there, so I'm intrigued. (laughs) So my husband and I have like these meetings. We have like finance meetings. We had a resolution meeting. And so we wrote down like our individual ones. I'm not going to go ahead and say those because those are very personal. But our combined goals, I would say like our biggest one for this year, and it's because it's a big year. So I'm going to spill the beans on camera. Uh Uh-oh. We're going to be parents this year. So Oh. Oh. Oh, breaking no, everybody news. Everybody in the office knows. Breaking Crazy. news. So that was one of our biggest goals was growing together as partners, but also with like the new dynamic that's coming in, right? Just being good parents. That's that's our biggest one. Awesome. That's it. What about you, Al? <laughs> Kayla, I don't think that's going to be hard because you're both very great people. So yeah. I yep. think <laughs> that's going to translate right into parenthood, truly. Yep. Um, You'd be surprised. But... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did. I, it. I survived. I survived. Same. Yeah. Same. Same. same, same for sure. You know? <laughs> and yeah. So, you know, not to get too far into that, but um, my resolutions for the year. So um, I have, you know, this, the typical one, right? Like I want to read some more. Um, And I know that we said that last year yeah. and we were like, oh yeah, we're going to share the books. We never happened. Like, so sorry, everybody. Um. <laughs> I think, but this year I'm definitely going to be reading more. So I have Goodreads. Um, If anyone, if you don't know what that is, it's just, this is not an ad by the way, but it's just a a website where you can um, track your reading with your friends. You can have lists of books that you want to read and then track your progress. So like right now you can go into the app and say, oh, I'm on page 100 of 300 and it tracks your progress and it says, oh, you're X percent done. Um, So my goal is to read 12 books, one book a month. I want to set the bar not super low, but also not super high is to not like overwhelm myself. It's super easy to um, pick all these resolutions and get super ambitious, right? And be like, I want to do this. I want to be this, but then overwhelm yourself by doing too much. So I'm not doing, my resolution is to not overwhelm myself with resolutions too much. So I'm going to read. I'm also really um, into just like getting my house kind of settled. I've been here for a couple of years now. So We've been kind of redoing the walls. I redid the bathroom. So we're slowly um, kind of finding that routine and making sure everything is kind of where it is and how we want it to be. So um, kind of hibernating and reading a lot are my resolutions. So oh, very good. Sounds like uh, a good time. <laughs> mine, mine kind of fall in line with what everybody else is doing. Improve your fitness, improve your diet. Yep. I would love to read more. Uh, and real quick, we'll talk about this is the uh, Forbes.com. They talked about some news resolutions for 2024. Can you name the number one uh, resolution? Mm, yes, I can. And I need to actually uh, take myself out of this because this was the list that I used uh, to make the poll for our um, ah. 
for our training um, list. So if you're not on our email list, definitely get on there because we have a poll every other week and then the results are released the following week. Um, and so we put the top 10 and had everybody vote on what they were doing this year. So Kayla, what do you think the top one was? I'm going to guess, I feel like everybody does act like diet and exercise every year. I think this year, I want to say people want to be off of social media more, like using their phones less. That's actually not the top 10. So um, the number, what do you think? That, so number five was improved diet. So the, uh, Forbes.com pulled a thousand people, 32% said improved diet. 34 said uh, percent said lose weight 36 percent said improve mental health 38 said improve finances number one was improve fitness 48 percent almost half uh there's some interesting ones on there so meditate regularly is on there travel more make more time for hobbies learn a new skill drink less perform better at work uh pretty awesome uh yeah and so just to piggyback off that so our poll um just off the top of my head i'm trying to remember so i think improve a f improve fitness routine was our top one that everyone voted for um and then some some other top ones were travel more and improve work life balance um so i think everybody's kind of on the same page same page here and there were some interesting stats about how long people uh keep their uh keep their resolutions, resolutions for usually two to three, three months. months yeah three so, months. yeah three months yeah three months mm-hmm and right. then you burn out because everybody gets too overwhelmed. So don't overwhelm yourself with your resolutions. Pick one, do it and do it well and commit to it and don't overwhelm yourself with the other stuff. You There are so many more years. You can do a resolution every few months. Love it. Focus on one. All right. This this week, our guest, Michael Sloan, Vice President of New Horizon Finishes. Uh, we're so happy to have him on. Uh, he is a fan of the podcast. We met him at an event. And the uh, New Rising Finishes is sponsored Lightning Round. So let's hear it from Mike. All right, welcome to the podcast. Our sponsor, Lightning Round sponsor for this month is Michael Sloan, Vice President and Co-Owner of New Horizon Finishes. Michael, thanks for being a sponsor. First off, this is awesome. It's always nice to have a sponsor on the podcast. But welcome to the podcast. First time out here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited. Uh, this was a few months in the making because we actually connected and it's always great when you connect with someone who listens to the podcast. It's always kind of a shock when someone says they actually do listen to this podcast. It's fantastic that uh, he actually was a listener and we were like, that's it. We have to have you on. And actually at that event, there was several people that actually listened to the podcast. So at least we know there's at least one person out there listening to us every single week. So we, we appreciate that. So for those that don't know who you are, Michael, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us what you do and a bit about your company. Yeah. Thanks Mike. Uh, so I'm a co-owner, vice president of New Horizon Finishes. We're a um, commercial painting company uh, based out of North Andover. Uh, we are longtime ABC members. Probably one of the first things we did after incorporating was join ABC uh, about 16 years ago now. Um, we are primarily, uh, you know, fast track commercial projects, hospitals, schools, uh, lately a lot of car dealerships, uh, country clubs, kind of things like that are, uh, are what we do. Anything uh, particular that you kind of specialize in, do you think? What would be one thing that you guys really brush it on? Um, so, I mean, if you're in a tight time frame and you need a project done and, and done right uh, with the people to call, uh, we really pride ourselves on just, you know, picking up the phone, call us, and let's get it done and taken care of for our customers. Not about giving excuses why we can't get things done for people and, you know, do what you say. Um, just kind of keep it simple. Love it. And then, um, so with your background, how did you get into what you're doing now? What was the, what was your, I mean, 16 years, that's a long time. I mean, what'd you join when you were seven years old, for God's sakes? Yeah. This guy's no way this guy. So 16 years ago, uh, what were you doing at the time and, and how did New Horizon come about? Yeah, so I came from a trade uh, school, some of the high, I actually took carpentry and computer drafting and wanted nothing to do with being a painter or a painting contractor. <laughs> Um, my father owned a painting company. Uh, I, um, did that over the summers and hated it. It was pretty much like the punishment for the summer. Um, <laughs> and Lori and I met, um, 
uh, at a company together. She was a project estimator there, and I ran the field. So our uh, specialties were kind of opposite of each other, a little yin and yang. We don't really uh, overlap much as far as what each other do. And just said, "Hey, let's uh, let's give this a shot on our own." And uh, it's been it's been great, great partnership. The two of us work well together. That, that's great. And then um, going back to when you guys first joined ABC Mass, and, uh, whose idea was it to join, and how did you hear about ABC? What was the some of the things that wanted you, wanted you to make you join? I guess. Yeah, so I actually came from a union painting company, the opposite side of things. So I wasn't familiar with ABC. Um, Lori, one of her previous employers, was an ABC member, and she knows Greg and said this is something that we should look into. And um, we did, and it's been great and big part of growing our business and networking with not only just our customers that we work with now, but you know, everybody from Jim Abbott, who's my financial guy, to our insurance guy. I mean, you name it, and they're there. And they're all in there, the same common kind of goals working together. It's been really beneficial. So, and, you know, that's one of the things we talk about. You know, we had a membership committee meeting this morning was the, the networking. A lot of people join ABC Mass for one reason and don't realize that there's other things, other benefits whether it be the self-insured group, whether it be joining some type of committee, whether it be, you know, the HR committee. If you're for small business, let's say, you don't have an HR person and you need some HR help and you're a member, you join the committee. You can ask some some HR people and network with some HR people that may be able to help you. It, the networking piece, you're coming to an event, shaking someone's hand, meeting them face-to-face, you know, handing them your business card. Uh, it's a little differently in person than, say, a Zoom meeting where you can't see anybody you can't hand them a real business card uh, i always like to highlight that you know the networking piece is so is huge because you know when the membership drive is going on in say october and people are like no i'm not going to renew I, I didn't get anything out of it or it's not worth it well, did you come to an event no did you try to meet somebody no 100 percent. it's what you, you know. put into it and even from starting my business in meeting those people at that point and even now, 16 years later, still the benefits uh, are there. Um, last year, we took advantage of getting um, all our guys trained and reimbursed through uh, the state. And that was all brought to us by ABC. It was, it was huge. That is, that's another great point. You know, not only do you have the ABC side, but, but the GCI side, you've got training. So if you want to get your people whether it be right. a, an OSHA 10, OSHA 30, if you wanted to get your guy, you know, a fall protection or a scaffolding or, a, you know, a, a silica training or, a, you know, PPE training, first aid training, you know, the, the GCI side, is, there's pretty much, you know, anything that you need to train your people on, we can do. Even like professional development. So if you got a couple of employees that you really want to help in, the, you know, when the managerial side of things and you want to show them how to be better managers, there's intro to project management. There's a, there's a, there's a, you know, a, a intermediate level project management class they can take all done, either be online or in person with the help from the folks over at Wentworth. Um, what do you think is next for you for New Horizon Finish? Do you think what's the next big thing that you guys are trying to get done over there? Uh, we're, we're focusing on growing our business and just keep that steady growth going put a lot of time into um, last year getting WB certified. We're a women-owned business. Lori is our uh, fearless leader and owner. And we've kind of just tapped into that and following into becoming DCAM certified. So we are heading in towards the public sector as well. Um, you know, COVID's changed a lot of things for a lot of people. Being tenant fit out, which was a big part of our business, um, has changed. So we're kind of opening some new doors and, and seeing what comes from it. I'm pretty excited about it. And being, you know, where you came from your dad's side of the business, um, do you think it's easier now to, to, to grow a business or is it a little bit tougher? Do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, it's every day is something different you know if if you don't have any problems then then you're not doing anything you know it, it's there's always something coming at you um you know before covid we were pretty content you know we had our little niche market and things were good and uh we were forced to shake things up and 
look at different avenues and it's it's going to be a exciting new year um you know really hit the ground running got a little backlog going into the year which is wow. nice that's great um, yeah especially for painting you know sometimes we kind of like, not the first thing on people's mind when they're erecting a building is the paint so right we we um it's exciting to have that do you still not like to paint i uh i hate painting <laughs> no. i do too i hate it so i hate it I mean, it it is a very physical and tough job I mean, is. to do it eight hours a day and, you know, be good at it. Right. Uh, That's right. You know, I'm sure you heard it. Anybody can paint. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think so. No. Until you start. Oh. Um, but really what drove me kind of back into the painting business was seeing that, you know, when we get on the job, it's it's like that 75% done. And to just bring it over the finish line yeah. and see the whole, the whole concept from paper come to life. And uh, it, it's a nice, rewarding feeling. And it, it's a fast-paced business. I mean, last year we did uh, 115 projects. Wow. Um, all different sizes, different addresses all over the place. Um, it, it's exciting. And it's um, a, a good business to be part of. Um I really enjoy the commercial side of it more yeah, than anything. I, yeah. I'm not cut out for the residential stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not not for me. Whenever my wife says she wants to paint something, I run for the hills because usually there's more paint on me or the floor than anywhere else. Right. There's never any like, oh, I, I can do this, but no, no. Try to cut in the ceiling, it's a mess. Forget it. It's, it's just paint on yeah. the ceiling. And you go back and touch up the ceiling of it looks right. I, I, I tell my wife, if you want to paint you got to hire someone because I, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. I don't have to pay. It's a patient. It's a patient man's. It's a patient person. It, it is. I, I'm not very patient. So that's probably nope. part of my problem. <laughs> I still have touch ups in my house. That will probably never get done. Nope. It's just uh, the, the way it goes. I just, it's just not that and raking leaves. It's just things I just don't like to do. It's just like, you know, the monotony, like, so you cut it in and then you do a coat and then you got to go back and do two more coats. What well, took me forever to cut? This in, I gotta go back. Mm-hmm. Then same with paint or raking, right? You rake leaves until you know, I don't know. I think it's always raking leaves. I can't. Six hundred. That's probably, that's probably my second least favorite is yard oh. work. No, oh, thank you. I, I'm okay with mowing the lawn, right? I, that, that's yeah. You know, I, my yard is just big enough where I can push mower it. You know, I should probably have a ride on, but whatever, I'll push it. Right. At least you get like a sense of like ah, oh, stuff. But the leaves are like forget it. It's just leaves, and then you get to bag the leaves, put the leaves on the curb. It rains, the bags get soaked, the bags, I think, I think it is, I just can't stand raking. Um, if you could go back in time and tell a younger, you know, go back to when you were, say, in your 20s, right? What would you tell yourself? What advice do you think you'd give yourself to help you help you out? Um, I would say think bigger, shoot bigger, set bigger goals, um, and, and get out there and learn a little bit more. Um, I think that being in the trades is like you're in the trades or you go to college and there's just kind of, at least for me, where maybe I wasn't the best student so that it was like, yeah, you know, you should learn a trade. But there's a lot of uh, education that goes into the trades that people just don't give enough credit for. There's just levels and layers of it uh, that are there. Um, Definitely. We will talk to students, right? You know, when I go to a classroom, I'll, or, or we're talking, I'll say, pers- people that want to be in the trade, and I'll say, how many people here love math? And they all, you don't, you don't love math, don't get in the trades because every, yeah. every trade, and I'm sure, including, I'm sure, painting, you know, you, th- you think yeah. about it, square footage, right? How much, right. how much square footage can a can of paint get us, right? Where, you know, what, most people probably wouldn't think of that, but if you're trying to bid a job or own a company, like, just, I can't just, you know, Dave just can't be slapping nine coats of paint on the wall. That that job just cost me ten grand. I, no, can't do that. But you know, whether it be an electrician or a carpenter, sheet metal. If you're not good at math, the tr- you you've got to be good at math. If you don't like math now, you know we've got an electrical yeah, one yeah. class going on now. These kids are like, no, oh, I'm in the trades because I hate math. Well, you're electrical one, buddy. You're going to be doing a lot of math. The teacher is yep. like, you you, you got to know math. You got to know voltages and Ohm's law and amperages and, and wattage. And, you know, how much wire you get to pull on these, you know, like even if something as easy as reading a tape measure, right? Math, fractions, adding fractions, multiplying fractions. You know, when you read a tape measure, it's not three, 
feet seven dashes. You know, it's three feet <laughs> seven eighths, right? You're going to be able to, what do the dashes mean, right? What is with you guys? Do you guys take people off the street with very little experience and train them to be a painter? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, if show up, yep. show up and we'll, we'll train you, we'll teach you, um, show up on time, have a positive attitude, put your phone away. And there's, there's a lot to learn. It's, it's more than just rolling a wall, cutting a wall. I mean, there's, yep. there's, there's spraying and, and then there's, there's different levels to being able to spray from, you know, your overhead deck in your box store to your fine trim in yeah, your kitchen cabinets. And those are skills that are skills in an art form that right. take time, yeah. years. Um, and, and these guys make it look easy. Even sometimes I see my guys and like, oh, man, he he killed that. Like yeah. that's better than I thought. So yeah, if 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 you are willing to to get up in the morning and do a little hard work, get a little yeah. dirty, you can make a great living. Uh, and and then that's just the start of it, right, Mike? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> then there's estimating, project management. You know, it, it just goes sky's the limit, really. And we try to tell people that too. So you know, maybe swinging a hammer is not your thing, but you can still get involved in the trades, even though you're not swinging a hammer or cutting a piece of plywood, right? There's, yeah. you know, maybe you love math, but you're not a good carpenter. Maybe you'd be a project manager, get with a company that you know does some type of, uh, you know, estimating project project. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to be swinging maybe, a hammer. Maybe, maybe yep. you don't like painting and you own a painting company. Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> you never know. It's uh, it's a great industry to be in because just because where you start doesn't mean you're stuck in there. It's 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 an open box where you could start sweeping floors and see you know a uh, acoustical ceiling guy who that's a carpenter, but you wouldn't even think that that's a carpenter's job, right? And uh, you know. You never know. There's a lot of opportunities. If you weren't in the painting world, what would you be doing? Uh, I was. I always liked uh, excavating, and I was actually going to take my fireman's exam. So I was oh. going kind of, kind of that route. Um, but the painting world just kind of sucked me back in. I was doing it through high school side jobs I, as a lifeguard at the Y. Yeah, uh, I would paint, you know, people's kitchens and bathrooms on weekends and always gave me that extra money. And it, it, it's been really good. It's funny how when you were a kid, you're like, ah, I hate uh, painting. Right? Ugh, well, painting yeah, it was like, the, was like the punishment. Yeah, your dad's like, listen. Yeah. Now, the, does your dad, has he seen how the, how the company grow? Has the company seen all that going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's very proud of it. He's not an employee, is he? You know, he didn't hire me, do No, no. Yeah, you know. Uh, family <laughs> businesses are tough, right? It's, uh... That's right. <laughs> hey, Dad, remember those days you made me paint all those times? Get back to work, Dad. Right, you know, a lot of payback. Back. Yeah, a lot of know? payback. Awesome, awesome. All right, so if anybody out there wants to get a hold of you for any any projects or jobs or questions, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, shoot me an email. It's uh, M Sloan S L O A N E at New Horizon Finishes. Uh, right now, that's my email. Awesome, and then we'll put, we should put that in the uh, in the when they do the video piece, we'll put that email address up on there. But now everybody's uh, favorite part of the podcast is uh, the lighting round, which is sponsored by New Rise and Finishes. Uh, this couple of months, this is great. So, asking ten rapid fire questions. <clears throat> I don't know why I got this frog in my throat, but uh, it's ten rapid fire. We don't like passes uh, because you're the sponsor. Right. We'll accept we'll accept this pass here or there, but <laughs> if, we, if you know we can tip your tongue type of stuff, it's even better. Uh, have you ever been told you look like someone famous and who was it? Uh, the guy from, uh, Sons of Anarchy there. Oh yeah. No, oh, yeah, I do see time. that. Dunham, is that Dunham guy? Yeah, Dunham guy. Yeah. Um, what did you name your first car? Uh, Jeepzilla. Jeepzilla. Was it, is it, what type of Jeep was it? It was, it was, a, well, it was just a big old Jeep Wrangler. Oh, love it. Uh, if you could have your own late night talk show, who would you invite as your first guest? Oh, first guest. Um, that's a tough one. Um, it's a tough one. We ask the hard hitting questions. Here. Yeah, yeah, you really it. stumped me on that one. Um, yep. I, I go with uh, Eric Church. Oh, all right, yeah, country western guy. All right, yeah, love it. Yeah. Um. 
What is the most out of character thing you've ever done? Probably this podcast, Mike. Really? Natural so far. Yeah. This, natural. Yeah. Thank you. Mike. Natural. Yeah. Thank Jesus you. is natural. Um, if you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? Uh, I would go to Belgium. Ooh, all right. Rouge. All right. Yeah. If you uh, if you could commit, uh, have you been there before? Is that like one of your favorite places? Yeah, I was there for a few days, and it was uh, beautiful. Loved it. Part of the world I've never been to before. Never been to that part of, that far east, I guess, to go to Europe. I've been west, never been east before. Someday. Someday. Yeah, it was a stop off. I highly recommend it. Oh, man. If you could commit any crime and get away with it, what would it be? I'd probably go with the bank robbery into a high speed chase. Yeah, right. That's what I, that's what would be my thing too, right? We should can you make a company and just like live like cosplay that type of thing where you just kind of uh played that out? That'd be pretty fun. I'd I'd pay to do that. Yeah. yeah. If you could choose any two people that uh famous people to have dinner with, who would they be? Two famous people. Uh... Famous people for dinner, huh? Yeah. Um, any, any people, any, dead or alive. Think about who would you have dinner oh, with? Dead or alive. Um, we can go back. We'll, we'll skip this one. We'll go back. We'll come back. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um. <laughs> If you could have someone follow you around all the time, like a personal assistant, what would you have them do? Uh, they, could, they could probably start by driving me through traffic so I can send text messages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Maybe I could have them do the messages. <laughs> uh, if you could go to Mars, would you? And uh, why or why not? Uh, probably not. Probably a little too hot and too much flying. Do you play any instruments? Uh, no, I would play the piano if I could. Yeah. Uh, what is the best dish you can cook? Um, I make a good chicken palm uh, and dinner. Then, and then we always, because it's the Coffee Break podcast, we always like to ask, uh, how do you like your coffee and where do you get your coffee from usually? I am a coffee snob, Starbucks, uh, uh, iced Americano, iced coffee all year. Ooh, a real coffee connoisseur. Yeah, geez. Yeah. Man. Yeah, do you, do you ever brew at home, or does it always go to the truck Starbucks? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll brew at home. I have an espresso machine at home and an All espresso right. machine at the office. Yeah, yeah, that's a you're a professional coffee drinker. So that's our friend Michael Sloan. That's sponsor Lightning Round this month on the Coffee Break Podcast. We appreciate you, Michael. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Mike. I appreciate Great. it. Thank you so much, Michael. It was a pleasure having you on the podcast. Uh, I hear that you are a, co- a a weekly listener, so it was nice to have you on the podcast, chat with Mike. That was super, super cool. Um, and now to trainings. Allison, what do we have coming up? Coming up this month, we actually have a lockout tag out class. We haven't run that in a while, so definitely check that out if you haven't. It's kind of a more focused piece of an OSHA 30 class. Um So that's going to be on January 22nd from five to eight. All of these are going to be at the ABC GCI Wilburn office. Then we have a confined space class on January 29th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. That one's really good if you're ever in trenches or obviously working on job sites that have confined spaces. You really want to get in there and get all of those tips and tricks. Um, And then a familiar one that we've talked about in the past, the mental health first aid class is coming up January 29th and 30th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you remember a few episodes back, we had Harry Carlson, who is the instructor that teaches this class. Um, He talked about his story with his own mental health journey. um, And that's just going to be a really great class overall. We haven't run it yet, so it is going to be the first one. So definitely get in at the ground floor. Um, And then finally, we have a pipe fitter prep for exam class starting off February 3rd and 10th. Um, That's going to be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Those are two Saturdays in February. So if you have your pipe fitter exam coming up, definitely sign up for that. Or if you're just interested in learning a little bit more, digging into it, sign up. It's a really great class to attend. You can check out all these classes and the rest of the classes we have through May 2024 at gwgci.org forward slash events. Oh, thank you very much. And then uh, coming up now is the first, now the news of 2024. And this week's news is sponsored by 
uh, some elite partners from ABC Massachusetts, Energy Electric Contractors, Metro Walls, and Veterans Development Corporation. So thanks to them. Uh, Feature news of the week is ABC uh, reports that President Biden's final rule forcing project labor agreements will face legal challenges. Uh, Late in December, the Biden administration published the long-awaited Federal Acquisition Regulatory Council's final rule and use of project labor agreements for federal construction projects, implementing President Joe Biden's executive order 14063, which requires federal construction contracts of $35 million or more to be subjected to controversial project labor agreements. You can read more about that in the ABC blog, which is in your newsletter that got sent out. Um, looks like construction job openings in November rise to the highest level since 2022. Non-residential construction spending dips 0.1% in November. We've got some great events coming up. Uh, if you have questions about upcoming events, you can reach out to carol at abcma.org. We've got a strategic planning 101 webinar coming up Tuesday, January 23rd from 8 to 9 a.m. And a great lunch and learn, connecting safety with well-being for the construction industry on Tuesday, January 30th from 12 to 1. You can get all those uh, ABCMA calendar events or by reaching out to carol at abcma.org. And as always, if you want to be on the ABC GCI Coffee Break podcast, we'd love to have you. Reach out to mike at gwgci.org. We have some member updates. Uh, Andrick Materials and Recycling LLC of Chicopee uh, leads the list of ABC mass companies with a January anniversary. Congratulations to Andrick for 40 years of membership. It's a crazy amount of time to be a member. I uh, also want to give a shout out to the folks down at uh, PEC, Professional Electrical Contractors of Connecticut. They're marking their milestone anniversary with 15 years of membership. And then we've got uh, six companies celebrating five years. So Builder Systems, Illuminate, Woodcraft Design and Builders, uh, Impact Fire Services, Mechanical Systems and Welding, and uh, Burlington's Electric Supply Center. So congratulations to all them. And then in, we got some exciting news about Erlen Construction's Matt Coombs, featured in New England Real Estate Journal. Uh, he's the manager at Erlen Construction. He shared his insights in emerging trends in construction in New England Real Estate Journal's 2023 year in review. Thanks again to all our sponsors. Appreciate it. It's going to be a great year. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to tag, share, and follow. Pod Squad, anything else? That's it. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.